What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video here at Red Dirt Reptiles. For those of you who don't know, I'm Corey Samples. For those of y'all joining us again, obviously, let's just step right into this. So, in this video, we're going to talk about breeding. <sighs> breeding ball pythons, man, is probably as simplistic as it gets when it comes to breeding snakes. Um, it, it's <clears throat> Once you've gotten breeding ball pythons down, I feel like the rest of breeding all the other species just kind of falls into place because your ability to pay attention and see the minute details and minute changes within your specs or your animals uh, really plays a key factor in breeding everything else. And by trying with ball pythons and learning how to master them first, really gives you enough on the next next level when you move up if you ever move up all right so <clears throat> how do they mate well <laughs> short 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 uh, answer I, I, I mean kind of is uh, you know obviously you introduce them to each other uh, at some point which we will get to in just a few uh, you know if your female is receptive uh, then you will see your male, and if your male is receptive too, you will see your male start to rub his belly or mid body up against her, just letting her know, hey, I'm here and I'm available and let's get it on. You know what I mean? Some good times. <laughs> uh, when do you know if your animal is ready to mate? I, that is an excellent question, okay? An excellent question. Um, there are a lot of us that have been doing this for a while that really kind of understand this information right off the bat. Uh, but for those of you out there who have really not been in this for a while or don't know the genealogy behind these things and understand the methods, let's say this, your females, okay, if you, if you have a female and male and you're breeding, your female should be no earlier than into her third winter. Okay, there's a lot of people that say at least 1,500 grams or winter. I throw that out the book. I want a nice, healthy female. I want my third winter baby. I need her to be three to almost four years old. She is in her prime and ready to breed at that time. For a male, okay, and for a female, again, even if she's three years old, I will say this. If she's three years old, she needs to be a minimum of 1,500 grams, okay, before you breed. If after that, if she's 1,500 grams before three years old, I don't care, I, don't, I wait. A lot of people out there will say otherwise, but I wait. I wait till the, the third winter just guarantees you a healthy female and a nice cycled clutch of usually viable eggs, okay? Males, on the other hand, can be about, oh, uh, let's say no less than 600 grams. Really, I like to see my males at about 1,000 grams before I breed. Now again, this is all circumstantial and this is all again opinion. Uh, this is based off my own experience. Again, you could probably go down to around 600 grams on a male to breed and be okay. Uh, but why push it? You know, your male's gonna turn off food and he's going to lose weight during breeding, so there's no point in having an unhealthy animal, an unhealthy snake, and I feel at 600 grams when they go off food, uh, it's just bad for them to go anything lower than that, especially when you're trying to breed. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, I would say that you definitely don't need to worry if they go off food, okay? It is not uncommon for males to do that. Uh, However, again, you want a sizable male so that once you get a positive breeding and he starts to go off food, you're not going to lose or go down to an unhealthy snake. Now, again, a snake will not starve itself to death, but it will put itself through the ringer and go down to possibly being a snake with skin on it. And that's what we got this guy looking like originally, and it's not a good time or it's not a good snake to be looking at. Uh, let's see here. What do they need to mate? Well... You need a male and a female, for sure. Uh, no male, male. There's no babies coming there. And as most of our guys would like to say, there's no babies coming out of female, female. Just saying. Just saying. Anyway, uh, 
as far as enclosures go, you know, you can do it in your actual enclosure that you're keeping your female in. Now, I always say to take the male to the female just because the female is usually more comfortable in her habitat. However, uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, I, I, I always say that. But to me, it's whether it's in a cage, in an actual cage, or in a racking system. I prefer racking systems. Racking systems have made breeding absolutely I mean, just especially for ball pythons, just absolutely easy. Some aspen bedding, some water, put your ball python up there, close it down, got heat tape up in the backside of your racking system, two ball pythons, you get babies quickly. Uh, when you get eggs, you are gonna have to wrap this girl, unwrap this girl from her eggs, you're gonna have to uncurl her. Now here's where most people go wrong. Most people will have their snake, and they, she'll be curled up, and they'll go in and go, uh, uh, oh, wait, she's moving, and that's what causes you to get bit. You can't do that. If they're wrapped up, no second guessing. Okay, just walk, be confident. You should already be confident handling your animal in the first place, but be confident. Go in, scoop the animal up. You're more likely not to get bitten showing confidence that you are the master of the domain than you are to second guess yourself. It lets the animal know that you are second guessing what you want to do and therefore making yourself nervous, therefore making her nervous, okay? Most males, if they're aggressive during this time, it's just gonna be when they come back to a feeding, a feeding regimen and they have a feeding response again. Uh, but even then, you know, you, you really aren't too, too worried about getting bitten by a male. Most of the time, a tame male is gonna stay tame throughout the whole process regardless. Uh, if, let's say, let's see, how do you know if it took? It's a good question. Good question. Uh, and, and I'll explain. Again, you're gonna see your female be nice and lumpy through her midsection. You will see a lot of thickening of her midsection right in here. And again, this is a female, so or this is a male. I'm just using her, him as an example. But through the mid body, you will see thickening. Huh. Yeah, you will see thickening. When she's curled up, you will honestly see a glow, a brightening of her more. She is going to be bright and beautiful. Bright and beautiful. Sorry. Dogs. Anyway, you're gonna have a bright and beautiful animal. Uh, you know, if, if you're doing it right. Uh, sorry, I kinda got thrown off where I was. Okay, how do you know if it took, sorry. It's as easy as it is, the easiest ways to go do x-rays, okay, just to see. After you've confirmed the lock and pair and you separated the two again because you don't want to cohab, uh, go get x-rays. Easiest thing you do, slap the, the snake up on the table, they take some x-rays, tell you how many eggs are in there and if she's looking good or not. Uh, again, you're going to have thickening of the body. You're going to see her glow really well. Uh, and if you're doing it right with proper husbandry, uh, man, your snake's gonna lay no issues for you, uh, especially just like in your wrapping system. There's no need to have a hide or anything like that. That being there is kind of their hide, uh, and they will just lay directly for you. Uh, <clears throat> I would say when you introduce the pair, I start with about 30 minute time frames for the first couple of times and see if my female and male are receptive to each other. Uh, you'll know him by rubbing up his body against hers if, if he's being receptive and wants to mate uh, She will fan her tail out if they are receptive, you get positive locks uh, Leave them together. You know what I mean? Um, if you're not sure if she's gonna be receptive Or if you think they're not receptive pull them out wait a day or two try again never hurts to try again uh and honestly, you can introduce a male to multiple females, or you can introduce uh, one female to multiple males throughout their lifetimes called uh, lineage tracing and, and, gene and, and cross genealogy. So you have multiple lineages coming from multiple males or multiple females, depending on which one you own. For us, we have both, so we could just kind of choose, but let's say we wanted to take him and pair him up with three different females. Or we wanted to take each one of those females and throughout their lifetime uh, pair them up with four different males. Uh, 
you know, whichever works. The only crazy part is, is that, you know, you're only getting to do this once a season, which is usually between mid-September to mid-November, and they're only cycling once a year and putting down clutches, so you really have to be on top of your time frame with the ball python on when that you are going to breed. Uh, if you miss your time frame uh, in the wild, it's usually between mid-September to mid-November. Uh, if you're getting in adults and you're doing it yourself and you've not seen them cycle before i would wait before you try and pair them let them let her cycle for the first time um, anyway in in uh captivity if you're keeping your husband you're right your temps right all that other good jazz you can breed these guys to, throughout the year all year long so just keep that in mind um if there's anything that I maybe missed or didn't cover enough uh, that you thought you would like to know or hear about, again, like, drop a comment, subscribe, share these videos, man. I'm in this for the education of myself and the education of y'all. The more keepers out there that are correctly educated about our animals, the better off our animals are, not only as our pets, but ambassadors, as ambassadors to the pet trade, letting you know everyone know that hey these guys can be great pets and if you're doing it right and you have a great pet like this guy right here why would you not want to show them off you know what i mean so again thank you all for tuning in here at red dirt reptiles and uh we'll catch you out the next video see you later